Well, guys, I've had Chinese boards on my hands in the past, but none of them were a B650 with DDR5, which apparently can support all the way to Ryzen 9 CPUs. Now, what we have here today is a motherboard that costs 100 bucks and actually goes pretty often on discount for even slightly less. And it's the B650i Night Devil. Now, you can buy it on AliExpress, uh, directly from the manufacturer. And now Qingyue, you might not have heard of them, but they're actually pretty good. They're not one of them no brand makers of boards, which really just makes motherboard with recycled chipset. They actually make brand new boards that at least the ones I've tried in the past are pretty good. Now, speaking about this one again, B650 chipset, which means the full connectivity of that. So it's not just a random A620, which is good. Then full DDR5 support type C. And they even promise you can control the RGB with open RGB. So we will see. Something else which is actually very interesting and kind of convinced me to buy this is it says here HDMI and DisplayPort output. Now you might be wondering, why do you care? Well, because I think even though, yes, you can pair this with like a Ryzen X3D chip, which doesn't draw much power, even like a 7800X3D, I think the ideal pairing for a board like this is going to be one of the new APUs if you want to make a very small computer. And that's why we have here a Ryzen 5 8500G, which I think would be a perfect match for a budget value for money combo with this board. But without further ado, I say we open it up, take a look at it, and then do some testing. Now the packaging is pretty basic. They give you a SATA cable, some washer to protect the board, this. I have absolutely no idea what this is, so we'll take a look at this later on. Ah, it says here Wi-Fi. So uh, ah, I understand what this is, but we will talk about it later. Then they give you a warranty card, our actual board, nothing else. So let's take a look at the board. Okay, so it looks absolutely stunning. Let me quickly talk about this thing. So basically, this motherboard does not have integrated Wi-Fi, but it is Wi-Fi compatible. So what's the difference, you might be asking? Well, it has the holes here on the back, and you can go ahead and just place this thing inside. And then under here, I will let you take a close-up look. Basically, you can put your Wi-Fi card and then mount it inside this little thing. So this is basically the enclosure for a Wi-Fi module add-on. First impressions are the board looks absolutely stunning. This is full aluminum, no plastic, and even the M.2 cover on the front looks very good. PCIe slot is reinforced and it is truly full of connectivity. But before we go over that, let me tell you about the VRMs. So now, but just counting it, it seems like it has 10 phases. Now, of course, we don't know these capacitors, where they're from, but 10 phases is actually very good. I can definitely see why they claim it can handle a Ryzen 9 with ease honestly. And then again, double NVMe, one on the back, that's absolutely useful, even though it will basically constrict you to dismount your board in case you want to upgrade on the back, but it's also what ASUS and MSI do, to be honest. Probably the only critique I have with this board is the backside right here. Now, this is also where the CMOS battery lies, so in case you want to undo it, you will have to take off this little thing over here. But I think they also do this because they want to avoid customs because you actually cannot import batteries into other countries because they're technically, I don't know, prohibited. But uh, this way, they will just sneak in, so that's nice. If we take a look at the actual heatsink, while this seems like a massive heatsink going on all over here, it is actually a very thin uh, heatsink. With these much phases, you probably don't need much more, but you definitely do not want to overload these phases because you don't have much to cool them if overloaded, so that's probably going to be an issue. Now, connectivity-wise, we have two USB 2.0 on the side plus the audio, we have four SATA connectors, we have the I.O. panel, USB 3.0, USB-C connector, 24-pin, of course, in a very convenient slot, two RAM slots, well, like every ITX board, two fan connectors, two fan headers, and then two 3-pin RGBs and of course an 8-pin. Now, using two 3-pins instead of a 3 and a 4-pin RGB is a brave choice, but that I actually like because mounting a lot of PCs, I have noticed that most of new released hardware actually uses just a 3-pin. 4-pins are kind of disappearing. They were very popular, but they're kind of disappearing because of course you don't really need 4-pins if you know how it works. So that's interesting and I think they did the right thing over there. Now, speaking about compatibility, this thing is compatible out of the box even with the X3D chips, but it is not compatible out of the box with the 8000 series of APUs yet. They have a BIOS update. So now I say we go and test it out and I have bought a Ryzen 5 7600 to test it out, but then we will also update the BIOS and try the new APU.
Okay, so we have our very tiny test bench. We have it all on our power supply. And now we are turning it on with a GT710 just to see. So let's try not, not to short everything. There we go. No LEDs. Let's see if we get a signal. Okay, super slow, but it did boot. So that's nice. And we got a signal. Now let's go into Windows. Okay, so here we are into Windows, and as you can see, the Ryzen is fully recognized. Also, our RAM is fully recognized at 32 uh, gigabytes. Now, we don't have the XMP enabled yet, but we will go in the BIOS later on. What I want to do is first off test the performance and see if it performs as it should, and also check how the temperatures behave. Now, again, we are running on a stock cooler, so we don't expect magical things, but we expect normal performance. And that's actually what we got here. So if we compare it like to a fifth gen top of the line Ryzen, as you can see, it's much faster in single core. Of course, it's like half in multi-thread, but it has less than half of the cores, so it's a very good CPU, but hey, it's not a Ryzen 5 7600 review, it's a motherboard review. So what we want to check is the VRM temperatures right there. So I say we make it run torture tests in Prime 95 for a while and come back. Okay, so it has been a while now. Temperatures readout aren't exactly the strong point of this motherboard, so we'll use a very scientific way to test how it's doing, and that is place my finger on the VRMs and see if I get burnt after 15 minutes, and no. The actual tiny heatsink here is actually completely cold, and the VRMs itself, yeah, it's definitely a bit hot, but that's to be expected, to be honest. Don't place your fingers there, by the way. It's probably a bad idea. I have burnt myself a few times. But yeah, definitely what I would recommend, even starting off, is just an air cooler, because this thing is also blowing air straight on the VRMs and that helps a lot. So I say performance tests is actually pretty good. Let's take a look at how the BIOS is. Okay, so to update the BIOS, just Google the model and then you will have to go to the official GNUI website and uh, you definitely want to Google Translate a bit of it because I, I don't speak simplified Chinese. I don't know about you guys. But yeah, here, as you can see, it also tells you that uh, memory capacity goes all the way up to 96 gigabyte, which is actually very good. We have seen that not very long ago on the channel. And yeah, you have all the specs, but what we want is our BIOS, which is this one. As you can see, February 2024, and as you can see, processor series 8000. I'm sorry for the Italian, but uh, you know, unfortunately, that's what I am. So let's download it. And uh, yeah, as you can see, our antivirus is blocking the download, but uh, hey, we like to risk it here. Let's see what's inside the packaging. So inside the packaging, you have a mysterious EFI, uh, basically folder and a Chinese thing. Now, what this is, is basically what you do to make a bootable, flashable drive. So how it works is explained in this Chinese file. So basically you format in FAT32 your USB drive, then you copy everything in the root of your USB drive, then you go in the BIOS, you boot it via the USB, and then you simply input this command right here to flash it pretty much and it will do anything by itself so now let's do it okay so we have formatted our, our usb and now as clearly is explained here we want to copy the whole efi thing into the root of our usb drive so we just drag it and we drop it nice and now we will just reboot it go into the bios and just start it from the usb so let's go. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now, first thing, we'll do the overview of the BIOS later, but if you want to put it into English or you won't understand much. Now, we want to go into boot and then basically boot via our USB disk. And just put it at first place, hold up. Ah, no, sorry. You, you don't have to do that. You can just leave it as you want, but then just go here and just boot override it because this is a good BIOS, actually. So now you don't have to do anything. It will just automatically flash the BIOS, as you can see. It automatically did like, uh, I don't know if you followed my tutorials on how to cross flash motherboards, but this is basically what we do. We ignore the safety features, then we flash it. It's actually these people that make these boards, they're kind of geniuses, you know? So they might be done on a low budget, but people who make them are very smart. So anyway, let's leave it to the flash and come back after the update. And here we are into Windows and we are connected via HDMI on the motherboard right there. So even this Ryzen is working, now my CPU-Z version is not updated, but everything is running fine. As you can see, the BIOS is updated and the performance of the CPU is also on par with what it should be. As you can see, it's a bit lower than the Ryzen 5 2600, but that's to be expected. So all in, I say we take a final overlook of the BIOS and then come up to conclusions. Okay, so now quick BIOS overview. And now this is probably the most complete BIOS from a Chinese brand of motherboard that I have ever seen. There is everything here. There is trusted computing, 
to play with the TPM. There is basically your ACPI settings. Now I will just breeze through it, but you can change the fans. Probably the only issue is that like the fans control are kind of bad to be honest, but you can change your resizable bar. As you can see, I'll always put that on enabled and then CSM, you can disable it if you don't need it, you know, NVMe, you can play around with it. You can even set the PBS and all these advanced settings over here, the North Bridge. But now, probably the most crazy thing is we have this tab over here. So AMD overclocking, you go and accept. AMD made this compulsory for most B650s. And basically, if you go in uh, Precision Boost Override and you go in Advanced, you can even follow my undervolting tutorial to dramatically improve the performance of your system over here. So for example, here we can go Platinum Thermal Throttle, 85 we can go cpu boost clock override enable negative and just go with a 25 and as you can see we have already undervolted our system which is actually crazy impressive you also have all the soc voltages you can change anything ddr that's very good honestly very good for this kind of bios and then obviously we have the boot configuration which we checked before as well with the password and also the override in the end so very good for the bios so here we are with the conclusions now this thing has to get a full recommendation from me, especially considering the price. Now, honestly, what is this board missing compared to the most expensive ASUS MSI Gigabyte boards in ITX format, of course? To be honest, not much. The only thing that's truly missing in terms of functionality is probably a good driver support on the website, but even here it is present and besides you don't really need it, to be honest. Then another thing that's absolutely absent is a good fan control. So if you have a, an external fan controller, you're gonna be probably happier with this build. But to be honest, manual ones have their own software, so you don't need that either way. And one last thing, is probably again software support so with asus you get armory crate you can just change all your rgb whereas with this one again you have to use R open rgb or some software like signal rgb to control it now i haven't shown that in the video but basically everything is perfectly recognized but you don't have the proprietary light effects that an asus or msi board has so that's probably the bad side but to be honest aside from those few things which as you can tell do not compromise performance in any ways this motherboard is not missing anything. It has an extraordinary amount of connectivity for an ITX board, even has USB-C support, and it supports Gen 4 graphic cards, basically anything you would want. You can even overclock and undervolt your CPU properly in the BIOS. Honestly, absolutely insane value. It gets a full recommendation from me, and I definitely think we'll be seeing it on the channel very soon in a budget build. And after testing it out for this whole day, I'd go as far as to say that you can actually pair it with ease with a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and an RTX 4090. So I'm really impressed. It's much better than, honestly, some of these cheap Chinese boards which you see. So do let me know down below if you have ever tried a board from Jingyue. If you like this one and if you will buy it for yourself, let me know how it goes. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. If you've liked the video this far, consider dropping a like, subscribing to the channel, and maybe checking out the other weird content that I put out. Goodbye.